Today's gospel, we hear our Lord saying that the harvest is abundant, but the labors are few. And he says to ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. And so that's an interesting point that God could, of course, just go ahead and give us pastors, good pastors, holy pastors. But instead, he wants us to pray and ask that they be sent to us. So the first question that we ask ourselves today is, how often do I pray the Lord of the harvest, right? The master of the harvest. How often do I pray and ask him for an increase of vocations? How often do I present that as a possibility to uh, young men who I see in the parish and think would make a good priest and encourage them to pray and to discern, right? So that's what our Lord wants from us is to pray, to ask, and implicitly also to encourage young men. And so in the first reading, we have the prophet Ezekiel, um, and this part talks about how God is providing a watchman for the house of Israel. And what is the duty of the watchman here? It is to warn the wicked man, to alert him of his wrong ways, and to correct him. And then if he doesn't listen, well, it's not the watchman's fault, but it's his fault. But it is the watchman's duty to correct and to admonish to bring about conversion of life. And so the saint we celebrate today, St. John Vianney, uh, was called by the Lord to be a laborer in his vineyard, okay, in the harvest, which was abundant and is still abundant. Okay, St. John Vianney, although he was not cut out, naturally speaking, to be a parish priest, Right. St. John Vianney, uh, he lived in the 1800s, and he was not gifted with a great intellect. He had a lot of difficulty studying philosophy and theology, and particular difficulty with the Latin, which in many cases was kind of a determining point on whether somebody had a vocation or not. But his mentor, his priest mentor, saw in him great piety and virtue, and for that reason, he was moved on for the priesthood. But St. John Vianney was inclined to a life of solitude and prayer and penance and really wanted to be a hermit or a monk, or I think he even discerned Franciscan life for a while. He was a third order Franciscan. But instead, God had another mission for him. Instead of solitude, he would be surrounded by thousands of people and spend up to 18 hours in the confessional. So much for solitude, right? Man proposes, God disposes. All right, we don't always get uh, what our first inclination is. And that's why we need to have it a spirit of discernment. What does God want from me? No, not what I want, what is most appealing to me, what seems to satisfy me, but we need to really discern and seek the will of God. And St. John Vianney worked miracles of conversion at that little town of ours, which had a population of 260 people when he arrived, and they weren't living the best of Christian life there. So just like the watchman for the house of Israel, he thundered from the pulpit. I think St. John Vianney is the one who said that the pastor should be like a lion in the pulpit and like a lamb in the confessional. And so he would denounce the sins of his people. And he called them out on uh, disorderly dances and unnecessary work on Sunday, and blaspheming, and all of these things. And he would deny some of them absolution in the confessional and send them away if they weren't disposed to receive absolution. And so slowly but surely, along of course with his um, hours of prayer, right? He, when he first arrived, 
His first task was to just kneel before the Blessed Sacrament, pray the rosary, and beg our Lord to save this flock that was entrusted to him. He would also scourge himself to blood for the sake of his flock. He would give light penances to his penitents. Remember, like a lamb in the confessional? He would give light penances and fulfill penance for them. So here was a priest who, as we mentioned in the opening prayer, had pastoral zeal. He understood that this was the will of God, not that he be shut away in a monastery and enjoy the peace and uh, quiet there, but that he be in the midst of the people and that he work for their salvation. So that's what he did with great pastoral zeal and generosity. And so this is a day when all of the faithful should pray, number one, for an increase of vocations that God give to the church and to the parishes holy vocations so that we don't close or merge parishes, but instead that we build new churches and that we expand and grow and evangelize and save souls. And so first, pray to the master of the harvest that he send out laborers. And then you should also think about your role in the parish. Do I support my own parish priest with my prayers and sacrifices, my words of encouragement, of gratitude? Am I active in the parish in helping out in the mission, right? This is the body of Christ in the local church that has a mission right there. You as a member can contribute with your own time, talents, and treasure in some way, shape, or form. There are so much, so many different elements to the mission of the local parish. You know, there's pro-life work to be done. There's catechesis. There's service of the poor and the sick. There's simple upkeep of the building itself. All of these different aspects that everyone can make a little contribution to. In fact, this is mentioned explicitly in the documents of the Second Vatican Council regarding the role and mission of the laity. The first place, first and foremost, is the parish. What can I do for this mission so that every parish, from what I understand, I think it was Matthew Kelly did a survey that only 7% of parishioners are actually active in contributing to the life of the local parish. 7%. And, the, and parishes, really, many of them do quite a bit as far as their work, corporal and spiritual works of mercy. Can you imagine if it was 50% or 80% if everyone in the parish was doing just some small thing? Right? The church would be a massive force for good. And that's the will of the master of the harvest, that we all contribute and do our labor for the salvation of souls. St. John Vianney, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.